broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. This is the TC MMA Podcast with your host, Chris Cross. Whoa! <laughs> Dana White Privilege. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Dana White Privilege. Privilege. Pri- pri- privilege. This is absolutely crazy. Unbelievable. Welcome to the TCMMA Podcast. It's your boy Chris Cross. And just looking over some of the UFC news today, there is a lot going on. I mean, a lot going on. It's hard to believe. Tuesday is the best day of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Because what happens is, is on Sunday after the fights, everyone's chilled out, right? No fights for a week. Tuesday, back to, or Monday, back to work. Everyone's focused on that. And then Tuesday, it's the start of the new fight week. Is how, how you can put it. I mean, Tuesday comes and bam, all the news uh, just comes out at once. And it's absolutely ridiculous some of the things that are in the news today. So let's just go through a couple of them and then we'll go through them in detail. Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, bow set for eight rounds. Sanctioned as pro fight for July 20th. So it's going to be an actual professional fight and the fight is sanctioned. But what's the rules? We'll get into that here in a little bit. Jimmy Smith slammed Ronda Rousey for saying Joe Rogan and media turned on her. Don't give me this victim stuff, says Jimmy Smith. And that's a hot topic for sure. Stay tuned for that and buckle your seatbelt. Armand Sarukin and Diego Lopes have pay withheld, face potential discipline after UFC 300 incidents. What did they do? I mean, what did they do? Also, Tom Aspinall admits UFC 304 start time is absolutely terrible. And wait till you see this. It's not terrible for us in the United States because it's going to be the same time as normal. But as you know, over in Europe, over there, the time zone is completely different. They're going to be fighting in the middle of the night and the wee hours of the morning. We got more on that in a moment. Colby Covington downplays Ian Gary fight taking place at UFC 303. He's not serious. Didn't I tell you Colby will not fight Ian Garrett? Bottom line, that's not the fight that's going to get him a title shot. And finally, Dana White says John Jones is always in trouble. I mean, he's always in trouble, right? Saying this on a Club Random podcast. So those are some of the hot topics, and of course, there's way more than that. Those are just some of the highlights. We're going to get into all that and more. But first, I wanted to kick this thing off with probably the top story of the day. And that's Ronda Rousey going after the media and Joe Rogan and playing victim. Ronda Rousey, you're not a victim. You're a professional fighter. Don't give me this victim stuff. Rousey said she felt mistreated by UFC commentator Joe Rogan and other members of MMA media after back-to-back KO losses to Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes in 2015 and 2016. Why is she using Joe Rogan's name? Because that's going to give views. That's the bottom line. And Jimmy Smith went off, saying the people behind the scenes, camera people, audio people, the people you can push around and the people you can bully and the people you can talk down to can't stand her, Smith said. Everybody behind the scenes that had to put a mic on Ronda Rousey couldn't stand her. I said, why? They said, she's a B to us from the moment she sat down to the moment she got up. Right, So that's what's coming out about Ronda Rousey, who's now playing victim. He went on to say they were cheering when she got KO'd. This is what I was told. And he goes on and says, don't give me uh, this victim stuff. I just don't want to hear it. Right, So Jimmy uh, Smith just went in on Ronda Rousey. And why did he do this? To understand the context we got to go back in time. So in order to do that, we got to go back in time. I mean, you have to. To put it all in context, you got to go back in history. So how do we get here? And we'll circle all back around to this topic. Why is Ronda Rousey getting slammed 
by the media, by multiple people for bringing up Joe Rogan and the media itself. So let's go back. At one point in time, men ruled everything. The household ruled women. Women had no rights. Not even in their own house, the right to vote, anything like that. And what happened was, is the men pushed it too far. For centuries and centuries, pushed it way too far. No rights for women. Zero. So eventually the women fought back. And you can look at the women's rights movement and its history and the beginning point at multiple times in history. But for me, it began when the men stopped coming home after work. And they were hanging out at the bars. And they were getting sloppy. Back then they were called taverns. And the women felt uh, mistreated. Right? Their, their man's not even coming home. And when he does, he's sloppy. So what'd they do? They went and destroyed all the taverns. They destroyed all the bars. Knocked out windows. And just destroyed the bars. So now, men, where are you going to go? Right? And women began to push this thing back to the middle. Right? For obvious reasons. Reasons that even men agree with. The right to vote. The right to have some equality in the household when it comes to raising the children and having choices and things like that. They had to push back to the middle. And rightfully so. And the women came together and made it happen. And at that point in time, it was virtually all women. Now it's a different story. When you say the women's rights movement, you hear the word women, but it's not all women. Right? Because over time, once the women got it back to the middle, they started pushing it further and further and further. Now we're completely the other way. And this started in the 70s with no-fault divorce. Meaning you could just divorce your spouse for no reason. And the government would give you incentives, give you half the property, future earnings, the children, child support, alimony, etc. And see, men, we aren't good at fighting back. We aren't good at coming together as a team and fighting back and keeping everything in the middle. We allowed it to go way too far to one side now. To the point where, you know, you got over 100,000 men in prison for child support. They'd rather be out working, enjoying their life, seeing their children, and more importantly, raising their children. They even created a word called deadbeat dads. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. As if anyone could have a child and not love their child and want to see their child and be in their child's life. Yeah, there's some that don't, I'm sure. And men aren't the only ones. There's women who get the short end of the stick too and go to jail for child support and never get to see their children, whatever it may be. But these are just some examples of the pendulum swinging. Men have all the rights. It comes back to the middle. Women push it far, far, far to one side. And again, we as men aren't good at fighting back. But what has happened in recent times is we may not have to fight back because the women's rights movement will destroy itself by attacking, guess who? Women. How? Look at what's going on in women's sports. Trans women are now competing in women's sports, which, you know, I don't have a, a dog in that fight. But if you start attacking women's sports, you're going to divide women. Right? Because women got to stand up for themselves. And you're seeing this. Joe Rogan just had a young woman on, on, on his podcast that lost the uh, swimming NCAA title to a trans woman. And again, I'm not trying to even dig deep into that because that's not my MO. But what I'm telling you is this is what's going on in recent times. It was all the way in one direction. Women got it to the middle, rightfully so, and then started pushing and pushing and pushing some more. And we as men don't fight back because we're not one team. And now you can be divorced for no reason. You can go in front of a stranger, in this case a judge, and that judge is going to tell you when and where you can see your children. And when you don't see your children, you got to pay for that time. 
and God forbid you don't get 50-50 and you only get like every other weekend, which I know a lot of men that have every other weekend and not 50-50 and their child support is through the roof. They can't afford to live. And men, and women too, but men, I can only speak for men because I am a man. Men don't know how to fight back. Men feel like inside they're the protector of the household. Whether that's true or not, that's just how men feel inside, that we are going to protect our children. We will, uh, in fact, die for our children if we have to. We are the protector of the household in our minds. And the moment you go in front of a judge and the judge tells you, you can't see your, ch your child for one minute on a Saturday, right? It's way worse than that, but that's just one minute. You instantly take away uh, that protective nature from a man, and it's just not normal. And it's not normal the other way either. It's not normal for a judge to tell a, a woman she can't see her children. Because even if it's 50-50, you're telling both sides you can't see your child half the time. Then when you get to court, there's all these incentives to uh, get more than 50-50. Because the more time you have, the more money you get. It's all broken down by 364, 365 days a year, how many overnights you have. That's the percentage. And then it gets multiplied by the income. And the less you have your children, the more you pay. And there's all types of annex in court going on from uh, abuse, accusations, and, and, and the like. Uh, in order, and some of them are validated, don't get me wrong. But you have all these things going on because it allows you to potentially get more time. In some cases, you got to wait six months to a year uh, to get to court to be able to fight those accusations. And by that time, your kids are out of your life. And for those cases where a person, man or woman, did nothing wrong, that's an agonizing situation. So this is important to understand because we're living at a time now where it's all the way to one side. So when you have a woman like Ronda Rousey, who now comes out and understand, UFC is a male-dominated sport. Like it's 90% male viewership. Easy. And that's just being nice. It's probably more like 97, 98%. You're in a male-dominated sport. You're a professional fighter. One of the most elite warriors on the planet. And now you're going to play the victim card? Well, in this male-dominated sport, we are having it. We know you're not a victim. And that's why you get this major pushback from a guy like Jimmy Smith and others who are coming to Joe Rogan's defense as if he needs us to defend him. The guy can KO pretty much almost anyone on the planet if he really wants to. His leg kick, I mean, you know, not anyone, not the elite, but that dude don't need anyone to defend him. But the bottom line is for Ronda Rousey to come out and say, oh, he, they, they came after me and they hurt my feelings you know, along those lines, we're not having it. We are not having it. But it's, under, it's a very important to understand the context at a time we're living in because the, the fight to push it back to the middle is coming. And I've said this a lot of my life. We may not be alive to see it, but this is a case with Ronda Rousey where this is a ripple, where the pushback begins. Trans women in women's sports that will take care of itself because that has divided women across the board. And even push some that might have been in the women's rights movement back to the middle. Say, wait, 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 I didn't sign up for this. So that's the time we're living in, and that's important to understand. When you see someone like Ronda Rousey, a warrior of the world, one of the baddest women on the planet, say, they tease me. They hurt my feelings. I'm a victim. And why do you do that? Because when you do that, the media eats it up. People put posts all over social media. It's in the media itself. Everybody's talking about it. When someone plays the victim card, they get attention. And that's a soft way uh, to be very blunt with you and, and say in a respectful way, that's a very soft way to go about life. And maybe someone else gets away with it, but not one of the baddest women on the planet who made millions in the sport and then comes back and says, they didn't do me right. They offended me and I'm a victim. We're not having it. We are not having it. So that was a brief history lesson, right? I don't often go on tangents like that anymore. 
but it, it's you have to understand the context if you're sitting around saying, well, why would Jimmy Smith uh, do that? Why would he go after Ronda Rousey? She's just stating how she felt and what her opinion is. No. So what if the media turned on you? Maybe the media turned on you because you caused that to happen. Maybe you made enemies that when you lost, everybody was cheering. Especially for the two people who beat you and Amanda Nunez and Holly Holm. The media and Joe Rogan didn't turn on you. You turned on yourself based off the way you acted. And everything comes full circle. And everything slides one way or the other, but it always comes back to the middle. Bottom line. As we move forward, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul out set for eight rounds. Sanctioned as a pro fight for July 20th. Now, you know me, I told you Jake Paul's winning this fight, right? Well, I may have to backpedal a little bit. Here's why. Each round is just two minutes, not three. Favors Mike Tyson. It's an eight-round fight. 16 total minutes. Totally favors Mike Tyson. So at the point where the 58-year-old would get tired, that has been X'd out. And that's a big factor in why I think Jake Paul wins. Now, before I'd say it was 80-20, 20% for Tyson because maybe he gets to KO. Now it's 50-50. Because if you look at three-minute rounds, that's like five rounds and, and one minute into the sixth round in this eight-round fight for two minutes. It's basically a five-round fight. So just when Mike Tyson's getting tired and gassed, the fight's over. And they're not using 10-ounce gloves, which you would normally use in a three-round match. They're using 14-ounce gloves, which favors Jake Paul because that adds to the weight, the cushion. He may be able to eat some of those punches. So Jake Paul does have some, something to stand on here, but now it becomes more interesting, and I'm right down the middle on this one. I'm still going to lean towards Jake Paul because that was an early prediction, and I stand by it. But the new rules are just crazy, man. They're just crazy. And Mike Tyson has a legitimate shot. Because at the end of the third, that will be the end of the second when I said he needs to get a KO at this time. And at that point, you just have five two-minute rounds left. Mike Tyson can do that all day, even at 58 years old. So it changes the total landscape of the fight. Also, Armand Sarukin and Diego Lopez uh, are having their pay withheld temporarily to f uh, face potential discipline from uh, the Athletic Commission over UFC 300 incidents. So if you don't remember what happened, Armand Sarukian uh, actually punched a fan, or at least threw a punch at a fan. I don't know if he connected or what. I saw the video, but can't remember. And the fan said, F you, put his, probably, allegedly, maybe, because I don't know. But the way he's describing it is that the fan kind of put his middle finger up and gave him like an F you sign. And therefore, he had to take a swing at him. So he might have to pay for that. The other one is controversial because Diego Lopez jumped over the octagon and jumped into the crowd. And we've seen fighters do this for the longest time. Khabib did it in the worst way. And it just takes one situation for new rules to start. And it, we're going to start, again, that pendulum swings, right? UFC was all fun. Now it's going to slide way over here to no fun at all. The people will react, and then it'll come back to the middle. But right now, if you watch a UFC fight when it's over, you got like 50 officials in the octagon pulling the guy off the cage, telling him not to celebrate, and it's already gone too far. As I've commented in multiple reactions, like who are all these guys in suits, and how did they get in the octagon so fast? The fight ended five seconds ago when there's 50 guys swarming the octagon. I mean, it's crazy. But more to come on that as those decisions come out. Sarukian uh, are going to get the worst end of that because you can't just throw a punch at a fan. Now, if they touch you and grab you and you feel threatened, that's a little bit different. Then that's on the UFC to protect you. But this one, uh, Sarukian's probably going to be uh, held liable in terms of some pay. No doubt about it. Tom Aspinall is going off the rails, admitting that UFC 304 start time is absolutely terrible. So check this out. It'll be in England, right? I believe. In Europe. The prelims, the early prelims, like the beginning of the night, which for us is at 6 p.m., 
the, the early prelims will be at 11 p.m. there. The main card don't start till 3 a.m., which means Tom Aspinall, when he gets a fight book, will be fighting at like 5 a.m. I've tried many times in my life to get up at 5 a.m. and work out, and it happened for six months at a time here and there, but who really wants to get up that early to work out, let alone fight another human being? People do it, but it's not the perfect situation. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this, because on one end, I'm like, hey, listen, the UFC's trying to make money. Like, people were tuning in for pay-per-view at 10 o'clock. They're not turning, tuning in for pay-per-view at 4 o'clock. You got the NBA playoffs going on. There's other things going on. Maybe at that point in time, there's not as much going on. Maybe the playoffs are over by then. I'm not quite sure. They should be. But the bottom line is, is you're going to get more viewers in America, which is where the majority of views come from, if it's at 10 p.m. So you got to cater to the American audience. Now, the thing that makes me step back from that for a minute is when they go to Saudi Arabia and to the Middle East, they cater more towards that time zone. So why not cater to the UK fans? But money is the motive and it always will be. And Tom Aspinall can go off the rails. It's not going to change anything. Colby Covington downplays Ian Gary fight taking place at UFC 303 saying Ian Gary's not serious. And didn't I tell you he wasn't going to fight Ian Gary? He'll look for any excuse not to fight him. And I don't know what the inner workings are, but Colby Covington saying, and I'm paraphrasing, that when I fight, I'm about my business. And if you're not about your business, we're not fighting. And he's saying these things, but it, it appears to me that Ian Gary is dead serious about his business and dead serious about fighting. But these are the words we hear. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. What we do know is when something doesn't go a fighter's way, that's when they go into the media and they start going off the chain. And that's what Ian Gary's doing. So they must have been in talks. Colby Covington didn't like something. That fight is not going to happen. And Ian Gary is not pleased with it. And Ian Gary desperately wants to fight in the co-main event uh, under Conor McGregor. And I think a lot of people would like to see that. But reaching for the moon and Colby Covington, that's not going to happen. Why not reach for an Usman or something like that? Because now if you can get Usman versus Ian Gary in the co-main, then we got something there. Then we got something there. And you got to bump Jamal Hill and Khalil Roundtree down to fight three. Dana White says John Jones is always in trouble. Saying on the Club Random podcast, you know, when he gets into John Jones' situation, it's like, John Jones is always in trouble. I'm used to this. The guy is always in trouble. Whether he did something or not, trouble finds him. And John Jones put out a video moments after the alleged altercation, and it looked like they were cool with each other. Everything was fine. Who knows what actually happened? We weren't there. But when someone accuses John Jones of something, it's kind of like, well, you know, he's done stuff before. Even if he is turning the corner and becoming a a better human being, you get accused of something, you still got to live with your past history when you're defending yourself, at least in the public's eye. And that's why Dana White is saying that. That's exactly why he's saying that. So you got a lot of topics happening today, man. And we got UFC 301 going down this Saturday night. People are not happy with the main card. But what do you expect when you, this is what I said going into UFC 300, when you load up, I mean, you're talking about Cody Garbrandt and Davis and Figueredo in the first fight of the night. And then you got like literally 26 great fighters, 12 former champions all packed into the same card and none of them are fighting for three to six months. It's going to be watered down for a while. So you can't expect UFC 301 to be a quote, great event. We got to have one that's not great. Then UFC 302 will just be okay, right? But at least you got Islam Mahachev at the top of the card. And then as you creep into June, you got Hamza Chamaya fighting. And you got Conor McGregor fighting. So we might have to go through one lackluster pay-per-view event, but it's still the UFC and a title's still on the line. I don't care what you say about the flyweight division. The title's on the line and Steve Ursaic has a chance to make history. So I'll be watching. Will you? 
Speaking of UFC 301, we'll be back in a day or two to get into some polls. Fans went in right now. Look up our polls uh, on the homepage at TCMMA Podcast. Click the community tab, and you'll see those polls right now are underway. Make your pick. Pantoja or Urseg? Anthony Smith or Vitor Petrino? And several other polls have been posted, and we'll, we'll break those down in the next show. We got a big Q&A coming. A lot of people weighing in on multiple topics like Hamza Chamayev, Conor McGregor. I'm sure people are going to weigh in on some of the stuff I said today. So we'll have to wait and see. But all that is coming. Please believe it. But for now, it's your boy Chris Cross. I hope you have a great day. And as always, God bless. Peace.